This video is for anyone who needs help completing CRQ 4.1. So you can watch this video, pause, and work alongside of me so that you can get this assignment done. The directions say, read Friar Lawrence's soliloquy from Romeo and Juliet, Act 2, Scene 3. Then write a five to seven sentence paragraph where you answer the question below. Explain the central message of Friar Lawrence's soliloquy and why Shakespeare would include this in his play. So you have two questions here. First, explain the central message, and two, explain why Shakespeare would use this. Two important terms we need to know in case we forget. A friar is a priest. So Friar Lawrence, remember, is the character who mentors and who marries Romeo and Juliet. And then a soliloquy is a speech delivered by one character when no one else can hear. It gives us insight into their thoughts, their feelings, um, insight into the character that we wouldn't get otherwise. So let's read the soliloquy and see if we can find anything about the central message or maybe why Shakespeare would include this. So Ferrari Lawrence says, the smiling morning is replacing the frowning night. Darkness is stumbling out of the sun's path like a drunk man. Now, before the sun comes up and burns away the dew, I have to fill this basket of mine with poisonous weeds and medical flowers. So really, so far, he's just setting the scene. It's the morning time, you know, the day is just breaking, and it's his job to go out into the garden and start collecting some of the poisonous and um, medical flowers in his garden. The earth is nature's mother and also nature's tomb. Plants are born out of the earth and they are buried in the earth when they die. From the earth's womb, many different sorts of plants and animals come forth and the earth provides her children with many excellent forms of nourishment. Everything nature creates has some special property. Each one is different. Herbs, plants, and stones possess great power. There is nothing on earth that is so evil that it does not provide the earth with some special quality. And there is nothing that does not turn bad if it's put to the wrong use and abused. Virtue turns to vice if it is misused. Vice sometimes becomes virtue through the right activity. Romeo enters, but this is still Friar Lawrence speaking. Inside the little rind of this weak flower, there is both poison and powerful medicine. If you smell it, you will feel good all over your body. But if you taste it, you die. There are two opposite elements in everything, in men as well as in herbs, good and evil. Okay, so what I notice when I read this is there's kind of a balance between two things going on here. He's talking a lot about life, death, good, and evil, right? Virtue and vice. Virtue is goodness. Vice is wickedness or evil. He talks about how the earth is our mother, our creator, gives life, but also our tomb. A tomb where you, is where you bury bodies has to do with death. This little flower can be both poisonous and medicine. Everything has opposite elements. Everything has the ability to be good and evil. So we want to find a way to kind of sum that up for our central idea, because that's our first question. So when we look at where to write the response, you can write it in this box here, um, but I like to use the races box because that's helpful to structure your response. So first we want to restate the question. Remember we take out the question word at the beginning, explain. So I would write the central, I don't know why that's blue, there we go. The central message of Friar Lawrence soliloquy is, now we find, want to find a way to say this. Now, you don't have to word it the same way I'm going to, but I'm going to say something like, there is both good and bad, life and death, in all things. That's kind of what I think he's getting at. And now we want to answer the second question. Why Shakespeare would include this in his play? So we take out the question word and we say, and Shakespeare would include this in his play because 
And now I want to think about possible reasons. There are many reasons. One that um, we talked about in class, and I think is a strong, a strong explanation, is that he's hinting towards the end of the play. Right? We already know from the prologue that Romeo and Juliet are going to die, and we know that their parents are going to end their fight because of their children's death. That's given to the audience at the very beginning of the play. So the ending of the play has both life and death. It has both good and bad. So I'm going to say because he is foreshadowing the end of the play. Okay, so I've answered both questions here. That's important. Now I can start to give evidence. Remember, you can use these phrases to get you started. So I can say as, instead of it, I will say as Friar Lawrence says in the text, comma, quotation marks. And then I wanna pick a quote here that I think is gonna really um, show us this. So there's many good quotes in here. I think one of the things I think is the most clear and to the point is this last sentence here, that there are two opposites in everything, including the ending of our play, good and evil. So I'm gonna copy that one, control C, bring it down here, control V, and make sure after the period, you do your second quotation marks. So you introduce and then you paste. And I might even be more specific and say, says at the end, the soliloquy, just to give really specific details of where this evidence comes. Okay, now I need to explain how this evidence helps support both of my answers. So I can say, this evidence shows, right? Use these phrases over here. First, I just need to explain what the evidence means, right? That there is good and evil in everything, even in humans and plants, right? There's good and evil in all things, in men as well as in herbs. Um, I think that that helps support this main idea, right? That there's both good and bad in all things. Now we need to show how does this connect with his foreshadowing, right? You can say if there is good and evil, and I'm gonna put this in quotation marks because I'm using his exact word in everything. That could mean there is good and evil in the end of the play. For example, since we know that Romeo and Juliet die at the end, there is evil. However, um, there is good in their families making peace. Okay, I know that was a little long, but we're first just explaining what does that quote mean? How does it support this main idea of life and death, good and bad and everything? And if there's good and evil in everything, that could mean there's um, good and evil in the end of the play. And then I explain just what that means, right? That's not necessarily clear on its own. So I add, for example, since we know that Romeo and Juliet die at the end, there is evil. However, there is good and their families making peace. It's a little long-winded, but it does the trick. Now I need to give another example, right? So I can use one of those phrases. Another example would be when R. Lawrence says, introducing the quote. And there's lots of good ones you can pick here, right? I think the beginning, when they actually are talking about death, they're talking about tombs, right? That could be a good example of um, foreshadowing the end. So I'm going to copy paste this quote. Paste, paste, and exclamation mark or quotation marks. Okay, so now I need to explain this evidence. Um, by saying this, Lawrence is conveying that. Now, I see a lot of students just write he is saying that or he is conveying that. It's always good to use the character's name when you can.